I'm Gary Peng. I'm research scientist with the Agriculture Agri-Food Canada and Saskatoon Research Center. I have been working with the club since uh, 2007. Back in 2005, a couple of colleagues uh, from Alberta reported the case of eight fields that they found the club root. And it wasn't stirring a lot of uh, the interest at that time because uh, the disease uh, had been reported uh, for over hundreds of years. When I visited a few fields, uh, I was just astonished to see how severe the damage could be. You know, look at the 40 acres of uh, canola fields. <laughs> there was hardly any plants standing. So I found that such canola was a very visionary. When I first approached them, I said, you know, could there be consideration for some support uh, for this disease, although we, we still uh, had not found the, the disease uh, field in the province? They say no, we want to be ahead of the game here. So they started the support. At that time, we had very little knowledge about the resistant sources, and we only know this pathogen will survive for over 15 years in the soil. I said, well, you don't have a lot of ways to contribute it. And we started with screening of the resistance, uh, collected about a thousand candidates uh, around the world. We looked at, uh, quite broadly. We found about the 20 different accessions from different parts of the world with resistance. And my colleague, uh, Dr. Fan Chen Yu, and look at the specific resistance genes involved. She has mapped those genes and transferred those to the breeding companies. Then we thought to further look at the crop rotation. Another breakthrough was the finding the inoculum in the soil. They, they probably will survive for 15 years, but that's only a small portion of it. Two year break from canola, you know, we'll be able to reduce the inoculum level by 90%. Patch management, it's particularly applicable in Saskatchewan where we have a fewer diseases in the field and a lot of them are still in small patches. That's where you can probably put in the grasses for a couple of years so that when you have that break there, the inoculum will go down quite dramatically. And next time when you put in canola, use a resistant variety. The, not all the operations will have the flexibility for extended rotation, especially when we talk about the four-year rotation. You want it to be following the resistant variety more carefully. You know, what pathotypes you have in your field and how do you rotate it between the varieties to minimize the chance of resistance breakdown. We have come a long way uh, at Agriculture Canada for this uh, canola diseases, especially uh, club root and the identification of those uh, genes and the transferring them to the industry and we do have the variety of the resistant uh, sources available. A new project that I hope to get started is to look at the seed treatment. There are some candidates there worth the screening. If we can provide certain protection or support to the resistance uh, uh, strategy, that will be beneficial. The continued support of our growers, uh, the funding, in conjunction with the federal funding, allowed the continuation of the club of research, especially in the resistance development. I have to say, now our prairie producers are very progressive and uh, and the proactive in terms of uh, supporting research, and a lot of things uh, wouldn't happen uh, without uh, uh, funding support from the producers. We're in a good position in terms of fighting this disease. I'm glad we started the screening for resistance uh, 15 years ago.